Getting great sounding audio always seems to happen either by accident or through some sort of protected black magic that you have to devote your life to studying it to master. But it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to hate the sound of your own voice. Recent tools have made it so that you don't have to have an audio engineering degree to have great sounding audio. Here's how to make perfect audio in DaVinci Resolve in just a few minutes. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent, even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic, parts with a lav mic, part of your, you know, with a phone mic, and so on. Well, it'll all sound great. We'll be using two key new tools to make this happen. The beta for DaVinci Resolve Studio 19, or the full version if it's out by the time you watch this, of course, and Isotope's game-changing new Voice Enhancement Assistant, or VIA. Isotope has been making top-tier audio processing plugins for years, but VIA takes out all the guesswork. They've partnered with Earthworks, whom you all know I love for their philosophy on focusing on everything helping you to sound better, faster. When you grab an Earthworks Ethos, Icon, Icon Pro, or SR117, all of which are some of my favorite microphones of all time, you get the Isotope RX Elements and VIA included for free. That is a huge value. Some of the best software tools to pair with some of the best microphones that you could pick. I'm rocking the Ethos here from Earthworks for this video. Great for ambient sound rejection while still sounding nice and clear. It's a condenser mic that sounds like one, but has the rejection properties of a dynamic mic. It's got a sleek space AG design and this incredible ball mount that helps you get exactly the position that you want. Let's set it up. Thanks to Earthworks for sponsoring this video. For this, we'll be editing the intro to this video that you just saw. So I've got my camera capture and my raw audio ready to go. All right, here I've put together our audio and our video. I've gone ahead and synced it up and just done a basic chop up of how it will go. I still have some graphics to add. I still have some other stuff like that, but we have the basics together. And I'm gonna do some basic, just like bumping up the loudness of our audio a little bit to even it out, but we are not gonna do any other processing right now. We are gonna jump straight into VIA. So when you install VIA, I'm on a Mac. Uh, on Windows, you will have it in your VST settings of your effects here in DaVinci Resolve. If you don't have the effects panel over at the top left, effects brings this up, audio effects, and then you have VST effects, separate from the ones built into Resolve. I am using the AU ones because those are Apple specific audio plugins and they work a little bit better on Mac typically. In my experience, let's scroll down all the way to the bottom and we have VIA from Isotope. I'm going to use this to automatically make my audio a lot better because if we drag in just the audio itself and take a look at the waveform real quick, or if we just pull it up in the monitor, you can see here there's a fair bit of noise floor. I'm actually recording with my AC going right now because it is a very hot day and you shouldn't have to sacrifice your audio quality for buckets of sweat, should you? I don't think so. So I went ahead and left it on while I recorded because that's how I do for a lot of my videos. And so it's got some noise issues. Obviously my levels are kind of all over the place because, you know, I am moving around the microphone a little bit and I haven't applied any processing to it. So we are going to do that here. I'm gonna grab VIA and instead of applying it to specific eclip specific clips, I like uh, keeping all of my voiceover for a given microphone on a single track. So I'm gonna rename this track Ethos. And this is only going to be my clips that I record with the Ethos. So if I'm doing a video where I have multiple different cameras or different clips from different moments, I will put clips on different tracks so that I can process, process them separately. And then I'm gonna apply VIA to the track itself. So I don't have to sit here and juggle and try to match the settings to every individual clip or potentially forget a clip. It's just on the track itself. So I drag it onto track one, which I have labeled ethos here. This is the automated assistant that will help us figure out how our audio should sound. So it says play audio to get started. I'm gonna click over here to our longer segment and I'm just gonna hit the space bar to play. And it's listening. It's doing it's doing magic stuff. All right, now it's gotten to the creating suggestion part, and now it has automatically built up some settings that it thinks we would want to use. So we have three different sections here in the assistant that we can rely on, and you can color code light mode and dark mode if you have different voices or different microphones you want to make that way. If you open up the settings window and you have two different voices, you know which one you're on because you can kind of toggle them between it. You have three different sections to focus on for settings. You've got Clean, which is going to focus on removing artifacts or background noise and cleaning up your audio, obviously. You have Shape, which is mostly going to be focused on EQ, kind of coaxing the presence and the sound of your vocals tuned to your voice. And then you have Boost, which is going to be kind of replacing your compressor and limiting stuff so you don't have to learn about compressors or limiters. So cleaning helps you master noise removal without needing to know anything, which is awesome. Everyone should 
just have automated noise removal tools. You shouldn't have to learn too much. Shape is focused again on EQ, so you don't have to learn EQ. And Boost is focused so you don't have to learn a whole lot of compressor or limiter tech. And these are the settings it chose automatically. And if I just play back my clip, we could probably just leave it at this and call it a day. That's what I honestly do most of the time. You can see here you have a bypass button that you can use to play it without it, or you can just turn off the effect. Uh, I often find myself maybe turning up boost a little bit more because I like having a little bit more of a louder coming in audio track that I will then normalize in uh, render settings, which we will focus on in a minute. But we'll play a little bit of a before and after here, but I love what it does for basically every microphone I use it on. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic, parts with a lav mic, part of your, you know, with a phone mic, and so on. Well, plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic, parts with a lav mic, part of your, you know, with a phone mic, and so on. Well, you can just hear while it's playing. I sound a lot more present, a lot more clear, and all of that background noise is removed. So it doesn't matter that I'm re recording with a freaking AC on. You can still hear me and don't have to worry about your ears being tainted by my unclean background sound. Now, you have a couple other options here in the software if you want to take a look. And these are called audio lenses. And these are ways for you to try to emulate different podcasts or speakers or whatever. So you, you can emulate the Beautiful Planet show. You've got GaragePod, public radio emulation. Uh, they've got a couple built-in profiles for singing high voices and low voices and then a true crime podcast. Now, obviously, these are only going to work if you're trying to actually emulate that sound and putting in, you know, right place, right time, kind of putting it in a place where it makes sense. But we can we can play with these. I am going to drag this clip over here to track two for us to play with. And we will we will demo that really quick. So I've dragged it onto track two. We're going to just play our voice again. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic. Plus, we'll help keep you sounding consistent. Even if parts of your videos are recorded with a fancy mic. You've got a lot of little influence there that you could go with. But I, I personally, I'm a huge advocate of just fine-tuning everything for your specific voice and that is what the automated assistant will do for you which is really nice you do have the option up here again to bypass if you want to listen to it or to just reset everything and start over so this is really cool in that you just have to add it to your audio track and play your audio for a few seconds and then you're done and basically your audio processing for your whole video is done which is great because resolve doesn't let you save audio presets super easily um, so that's pretty nice so that is mostly it for via like that th that's all it takes to get really really good audio i do usually go a couple other steps further um in that i, I get a lot of complaints about my lower register voice and the way it plays on close-up microphones and stuff with regards to a, a low-end kind of rumble or boom and so i tend to add either on my vocal track or i will just add it on my master bus i come in here and grab a an eq and you can use any eq plugin for this whatsoever like it truly doesn't matter um, but I'm just going to drag it on my master bus and just add a basic high pass filter, about 70 hertz. And that just helps roll off some of the low end that is kind of amplified by any compressor or whatever with my voice. And because I'm, we're going to do some loudness normalization in a second, that kind of amplifies it further. So just throwing in that extra EQ on the master bus over here. And then I just know that that is being rolled off an additional step that will save me a bit of trouble. I do want to note that if you mess around with nested timelines like for example all of this is in a timeline called a roll intro intro often for my videos due to color grading and things like that i will make an a roll which is just my on camera part timeline and then put that in the final timeline so i'll say via tutorial if i put this a roll composition into that timeline resolve is going to have trouble building the waveforms for this since it's it's resolve struggles with a lot of like vsts and other audio processing plugins to generate the waveform in your preview here. So you might have trouble with that. The workarounds are either to go ahead and export your audio as a wave file, which you can uncheck video, go over here to audio, choose wave as the container, 32 bit, export this as a wave file and just import that over top of your audio here and just mute out the process track. So you have it or to just 
not nest your compositions. That's just a resolve quirk, not VS fault, but just something to keep in mind if you want those waveforms while you're editing. Now, another step that I would do if I were making this a full video, because we want to get all of our audio sounding great, is to bring in some music and have that play with our voice. So we're going to use some backing track, backingtrack.gg, uh, stream safe, video safe music that you can use for your videos. So we're going to just bring in something from one of our recent albums. You'll want to choose your music like more specific to the video and whatever, but we're just, we're bringing something in. I'm going to, you know, we'll play a track. We want to find something that is exciting and whatever for our intro and we will bring it in here and bring it beneath our audio. Now you can see I've left this gap here as I will be having a title card of sorts here and we kind of want the music to come up and then we also have this transition, stinger transition here that will want the music to come up in as well. So typically what I would have to do is manually keyframe all this and then it's an annoyance whenever anything moves and whatever, but Resolve 19 comes with some audio ducking capabilities that we can mess with as well, which is very, very exciting. So. Let's go ahead and click our audio track for audio track two. I'll name this music. We'll click on the track and there's just empty space down here. And now we have some new audio processing settings in our inspector that you can find in the top right. And one of those, you've got music remixers, so you can change the instruments. You've got dialogue levelers, that kind of stuff. But we want the ducker. We're going to turn this on and then our source, you want to choose your microphone source. So a big thing is you want to apply the duck to your music and choose the microphone as the source because that is what's going to control the duck. And auto ducking just means that it's going to automatically move up and down based on another source. So it will automatically get louder when you are quiet as a speaker and it will automatically get quiet when you are loud as a speaker. You don't want to be too aggressive for this and I have a couple other videos on audio ducking for like live recording in OBS and things like that linked in the description if you are interested. But you could use this on your music, if you have gameplay sounds, system sounds in the background, whatever, and it will hugely help automate your workflow while still giving you a professional result. So right now the music is super, super loud and we don't, we don't really want that. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the window for this, which gives us a much nicer view. Now we are going to first set our levels that we want to be at when the voiceover is not playing like that is really really loud we probably want it at minus 10 ish that's probably fine but then we want it to duck more when our voice starts talking you can see that is not enough so you have a bunch of different options here first is duck level and that is just how much it'll reduce by typically i want it around minus 20 to minus 30 when i'm speaking so 2.7 db is nowhere near enough we need to crank that bad boy up so we'll add another 13 decibels of reduction let's see if that's quiet enough Thing great sounding audio always seems to have the sound of your own voice recent tools have made it so that you okay now you will notice something. We get this visual here. You can see in that spot where I stopped talking for a moment, it spiked back up. That was too quick. We don't want it every breath just kind of interjecting. We want it only when I've, you know, we have a longer gap. So look ahead. We want to increase this to say 500 milliseconds, which is the most, I guess, to give it more time to know when the stuff is coming, like when your breaks are coming. Rise time is how long it takes to get loud. We want to increase this. This is up to one second. We want it to take, let's say, almost 200 milliseconds to climb back up. And then the hold, we want to hold it for at least 200 milliseconds. And then recovery, I think, is the fall back down. That one's a little bit longer. So now let's play it. Your wife to studying it to master. But it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to hate the sound of your own voice. Recent tools have made it so there we go. It did not do it there. Audio engineering degrees. They have great sounding audio. Here's how to make just a few minutes. Plus, we'll help keep. There we go. And you can see it automatically started adjusting for that because of the look ahead. Instead of jumping up real quick or whatever, we got a smooth transition up. We got a decent hold. And then it kind of spiked back down. We want to we wanna maybe have it slow down some more. I assume that's what recovery would be. I hate these kinds of dials, by the way. Okay, so for look ahead, I guess that controls the spike back down. So we want to maybe turn that down a bit more. Plus, we'll help keep 
Okay, that's pretty good. So with that, it's going to only really spike up here and not while I'm talking, which is exactly what I want. Well, it'll all sound great. We'll be using two key new tools to make this happen. The beta. Ultimately, it's still too loud on its own. Uh, so we need we do need to turn down the ducking level even more. Okay, we get a max of 18 decibels of reduction. To make this happen. The beta for DaVinci Resolve to be sounding That's sounding pretty good. I'm liking the sound of that, but something else we also want to do is kind of EQ our audio just a little bit so that it's not interfering with the same vocal or the same frequencies as our vocals because you want to have a kind of diverse soundscape as it were. So I'm going to drag an EQ onto our audio track for the music and we are going to roll off some of that low end a fair bit and and maybe roll off the high end a fair bit too. Uh, this is something you will have to play with based on your specific sound, but you don't want it to sound like it's muddying up your vocals too much. You want your vocals to cut across it. That's a pretty drastic implementation, but you can see how applying this really sharp EQ still gives us a sense of the music, but it removes a lot of that presence that's interfering with our voice. Isotope has been making top tier audio processing plugins for years, but Via takes out all the guesswork. Isotope has been making top tier audio processing plugins for years, but Via takes out all the guesswork. So again, you can do all of this to your, your background music, your game sound if you're doing gaming videos, your system sound, or whatever. And of course, the last step comes in our delivery. Now, I have a whole DaVinci Resolve export settings video if you want to go watch it, but Say, for example, we'll export this in ProRes. For audio, you want linear PCM, which is why even if you're using H.264 or H.265, you want to be exporting with the QuickTime MOV container under format rather than MP4 because MP4 doesn't really support this right now. With MOV or QuickTime selected, you can choose linear PCM, which is uncompressed audio. Pretty, pretty much every video platform today supports this, and it means your audio is not getting compressed or getting any additional artifacting before it hits their compression, which is absolutely what you want to get the best possible audio quality. 32-bit bit depth is the best that you can get. I highly recommend just leaving everything at that so all your processing is left alone and not formatted to another bit depth. And I explained this more in the video. And then normalize audio and choose YouTube. And this applies to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just use the YouTube minus 14. In this case, it's LKFS. Usually I see it as LUFS loudness normalization. And this is going to normalize your entire audio track to be a certain loudness so that it does not need to be reduced or gained up by any specific video platform. So your video isn't too loud or too quiet. This is the web video standard. And I highly recommend doing this and then export it. And you can save this as a preset or whatever, and you will have the best possible audio quality. <laughs> It's really that simple. You can see how the whole bundle is designed to get out of your way and out of the way of your creativity and just let you make stuff. That is what I am all about on this channel. This is the simplest way to sound your best and love the sound of your own voice. You should be watching your videos over and over to see what you can improve, and it's best if you're not cringing while you do it. If you have more time and you want to dive in on cleaning up your audio more, if there's something going on in the background or you have something that's super clipped from the break, you have access to the full RX Elements suite in this bundle too, which has awesome de-clip, de-reverb, de-click, de-hum, all of the Ds that you want to clean up and perfect your audio. Check out this bundle linked below and get yourself an awesome mic and processing suite. Check out this video to see my thoughts on this shiny new microphone right here. And remember to be kind. Rewind. <laughs>